so I wanted to do a quick video about what's happening in southern Iceland at the moment. Now, Iceland, if you're aware, Iceland is quite a volcanically active country, and the past couple of weeks have been particularly uh, active, shall we say. The In the southwest of the island, you've got a peninsula called Reykjanes Peninsula, and the Mid-Atlantic Ridge roughly follows down part of this peninsula and they've been having up to two and a half thousand earthquakes a day for the past couple of weeks so they've had several several thousand earthquakes for the past few weeks several of which have got above five and in fact they had one a few hours ago at about quarter past two that was a 5.4 that's quarter past two on the 14th of march 2021 and if you have a look at the, the map for the rest of the country, you can see that there's not a lot of activity taking place across the rest of the country. This is pretty unusual activity. Normally you get a few hundred earthquakes maybe over the course of, course of a few weeks, most of them fairly small, dotted around a, a lot of the island. I've been keeping an eye on the Icelandic Met Office, which monitors the earthquake activity in the country Needs that I've been keeping watch of the earthquakes and volcanic activity in Iceland just for my own personal interests. I've never seen anything quite like this. And official warnings have been issued by the Icelandic um, government regarding the volcanic potential for volcanic activity that's taking place there. Now, as you can tell, obviously from the map, you can see the thousands of, of little dots, each one of these representing an earthquake. If it's a start above magnitude 3, and they're all focused on a small area around Krasjovik and Vagraldasfjall. Horribly mispronounced that one, I know. The obviously warnings have been issued for the local residents, and extensive monitoring has been taking place around the Krasjovik volcano, has actually been put at orange alert status for their volcanic monitoring. They are anticipating a potential eruption. Obviously, no guarantees, but it's highly, highly likely that this will erupt in the not too distant future. And you can see from one of the latest uh, satellite images and GPS maps that they've produced, the deformation that's taking place in and around the area is quite extreme. The magma is thought to be as little as one to one and a half kilometers below the surface at this point with a lot of the earthquakes taking place between one and a half and about three kilometers in depth so this is the result of the, that magma moving underneath Iceland and making its way to the surface so what kind of eruption is it likely to bring well there is a lot of groundwater in the Reykjanes Peninsula purely because of its proximity to the sea and this can lead to a potentially explosive initial eruption just because the, the presence of the water increases the pressure and you're more likely to get a explosive eruption from that one however if it's anything like previous eruptions in the area the last one being in the 12th century started around about 1150 sorry, in the year 1150, and after the initial explosion it became basically a, f a fissure eruption. So you've got these long fissures that extend for, I mean, in this area, in, in the in the Krasovic area, um, extend for about 10 or 11 kilometres long in many cases. And what you'll get is these rather impressive lava fountains, you'll end up with these rivers of lava pouring out across parts of the peninsula. And going back to the 12th century example, this activity went on for about 30 years. So there is the possibility that this could be the build up to a prolonged uh, period of volcanic activity within Iceland. Again, no guarantees on this. It could be a one off eruption and it's all over and done with. But just using the, the, the last example, exam um, just using the last eruption as an example there is the distinct possibility that this could be quite a prolonged period of activity. Impacts for Iceland, potentially quite severe. Uh, the 
problems there is its location as you can probably guess from the map it's about 20 kilometers from the international airport at Keflavik and about 30 kilometers from downtown Reykjavik so good two-thirds of the population of Iceland are potentially within the not within the not within the blast radius but they're potentially affected if the lava flow is quite excessive and cuts off the main road between the international airport and the capital as for the rest of Europe uh, will it close down airspace like the IFJT Ethiopical eruption did probably not uh, simply because it's not likely to have that prolonged period of explosive activity. Obviously, don't take my you know, don't take my word for it. I'm not a volcanologist by any stretch of the imagination or a disaster management specialist, but I don't see it being quite as uh, explosive an eruption as the 2010 Ayer Fiat one. But it will cause problems for for Iceland itself. There will be the increase if it does go on for a uh, an extensive lava flow in a fish, with the fissure eruption. There will be the emission of a lot of gla gas. Uh, Icelandic volcanoes have a habit of producing a lot of um, sulfur and some calcite, but also some quite a bit of fluorine as well in a lot of their eruptions. So yeah it'll, it'll depend on what exactly where the source of the magma comes from as to what exactly the gas content will will be from from any potential eruption but it's uh yeah it's a little um i mean obviously it's a for somebody in the uk it's a little exciting to watch obviously if i was living in iceland I'd, certainly if i was living in that area i'd probably be more nervous than excited um so let's hope it's not too for their sake let's hope it's not too serious an eruption but I just thought I'd do that as a nice little geological news update that there is the potential to see a quite extensive volcanic eruption in Iceland in the not-too-distant future. 